while it may not have been looking good for a while, Colin can be saved. Many of you guys, which also happen to be fans of Colin, aka Paranormal Files, have reached out to me to see if I could address some of Colin's issues, maybe, you know, give some more information about what's going on with him, and so on and so forth. Now, I just want to preface this and say a lot of the information that I got through my channel, like, you know, my psychic channeling, a lot of it is private and I do not feel comfortable sharing it to everybody for the whole world to see because a lot of it, you know, is, you know, information that he might not want out there. And I did email him, okay, I haven't gotten a response but I literally emailed him today about, you know, my, I have nine pages of notes here of all the things I got through my meditation and channeling. And while I will address some of the more public things that he's talked about, uh, there's a lot of information that I will not talk about unless he gives me permission. So I just wanted to state that, you know, because, you know, sometimes you get information that the public has no business knowing. Not only that, it can affect the person's ability to heal if some information is divulged that shouldn't be divulged. So just wanted to lay that out there, plain and simple. But the stuff that I will talk about, I wanted to cover most of the public stuff that everyone pretty much knows about. He has his own family medium, and I'm sure he already knows a lot of what I'm going to say in this video, and maybe there's some things he doesn't know about in this video. But I will address one of his attachments. Um, and some ways that he can help himself get rid of it. So, without further ado, here we go. Now, obviously, I don't watch everybody in the paranormal community. Like, I have a lot of shit that I gotta do. And while I wish I had the time, I simply don't. But, from the few things that I have seen Colin do in his videos... And there's a lot of things that I know that he's done off camera. From Ouija boards to blood rituals. Apparently blood rituals is a thing that he does a lot or has done a lot in the past. We're going to address that specifically because there's a lot of dangers when it comes to doing dark magic rituals or dark practices or what have you, okay? Things of lower vibration if that makes sense. So I want to talk about that. Now I did happen to catch the one video he did with Exploring with Josh and I know Josh did the blood ritual with Robert the Doll's replica or what I think it was his replica. I hope it was his replica. I forget. It's been a long time. Nonetheless, whether it's his replica or not, there are many dangers to take into account here. So Spirit made it abundantly clear, and a lot of you already picked this up and know just from watching his content, that, you know, doing one or some of the blood rituals is when you noticed an issue with Colin. Yeah, I have to agree, actually. And, you know, when I did my channeling, not remembering that he did anything with um, Josh. When I was doing the channeling, I kept getting the satanic like upside down pentagram and I was like, okay, this is important. When that comes to me in a channel, that tells me they did something dark or on the darker side of things when it comes to dark magic. Dark magic isn't something to dick around with, okay? It's very serious. In Colin's case, just based off past life patterns, it doesn't surprise me 
it's the best way I can describe it is in past lives he has some roots to paganism okay paganism isn't always bad paganism is a broad term for things pretty much outside of Christianity things that don't follow like the whole Christianity thing but also like you have the Wicca witchcraft things that have to do with nature like it's it it's a very vague and broad term right and so it doesn't surprise me that he kind of is drawn to this stuff because it's almost like a muscle memory thing. And I'm not saying he did anything dark in his past lives. I'm not saying that at all. But it's just like the motions to doing some of these things. It makes sense. Just like how, you know, some of the stuff that I do has a direct relationship to some of the things I've done in my past lives. Okay? Just wanted to say that briefly. So to get right to the point. When a person uses their blood in any kind of ritual for a specific entity with the objective to communicate, connect, show respect, yada, 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 when you use your blood in those rituals for anything that's negative or low in vibration, and let me just say this too, benevolent beings will never ask you for your blood or for you to partake in dark rituals <laughs> just want to say that like loud and clear but you know giving your blood for whatever reason to a negative or an entity in low in vibration what the person is actually doing is giving the entity permission to either attach and or take their energy which the act of taking energy from a person via permission, they're still creating energy cords to that person and it still is a form of attachment. So you do not want to do that. That's bad. That's dangerous. That's one way to get an attachment that you don't want. And so in Colin's case, and actually um, Josh, probably you can fit him in here too, um, yeah. Now, did he, did Colin get this specific attachment when he did the, the thing with the, the Robert the Doll replica thing? No, I think he's had it before then, and I think it's because he did another similar ritual where he gave his blood, and yeah, and that's the point of attachment there. Now, there are some things I noticed and this is based off of patterns that I picked out from past clients. Every single client that I have had that delved in black magic or dark rituals has had a snake type entity attached to them. I am not saying though, however, that every snake entity attachment is a result of witchcraft or dark rituals or dark practices. I'm not saying that at all. I am just saying that I noticed the correlation with my clients that the ones who did do some sort of dark magic or dark rituals had this type of snake-like entity attached to them. And through these patterns, I've also noticed that these people that have used this type of magic this type of snake entity is a type of familiar. What are familiars? Familiars are entities as a result of or produced by witchcraft of the darker spectrum, if that makes sense, dark rituals, anything that is practiced that is low in vibration in the witchcraft realm so you can have them produced as produced from you know the negative energy output from that action it can be conjured through a similar way or purposely or two or three sorry or three 
the entity that the person is trying to work with or thinks they're working with or trying to connect with, whatever, they get their assistant or a partner or an entity that, like, works alongside with them and a lot of times that is a familiar and a lot of times demonic entities work with snake entities and a lot of non-human even if they're not demonic entities work with snake familiars or snake entities so guys please do not do any type of dark magic rituals or witchcraft and I, I'm not saying like witchcraft as a whole I'm just saying the darker spectrum of it because you know there's a lot of things in witchcraft that are positive I'm referring to the darker end of it now some of you may ask okay what are some like attachment risk factors that can bring on attachments or hauntings and I'm going to talk about one specifically, like correlating to Colin, minus some that are is a little private in details, but um, kind of works or can be applied to others. So I've said this before, paranormal investigations, if you do them incorrectly, you could walk away with an attachment. What do I mean by that? Challenging entities, doing blood rituals to communicate with entities, um, not cleansing yourself and or your equipment when you're done your investigations, taking things from a location without cleansing them, especially a haunted one, don't do that. Not setting proper boundaries. Never yell, and this also goes with challenging, but don't be yelling at spirits and shit. You gotta be respectful. Respect is huge because you do not know what you are dealing with and you do not know what they are capable of doing in retaliation if you piss them off or if they feel like wanting to attach to you, essentially. Um, other things, abilities can attract other entities. Not, And I'm not just saying like demons. I'm just saying this as like attachments in general, no matter what kind of entity. But abilities tend to attract other entities because people with abilities are easily affected by these types of energies. They're more sensitive to these energies. For example, I am very sensitive because I am clairsentient and fun fact, Colin is also clairsentient and so I wouldn't be surprised if he gets headaches or stomach issues and that has to do with, in part, the sensory issues with certain energies. Um, people with abilities like clairvoyance, a lot of them could get or be more affected by visions of grotesque visuals. Like that's just part of it. Transmutation issues. If your body cannot transmute that negative energy into positive energy and cannot ground itself properly, you're going to have room for issues. Health issues, of course. When somebody is at their weakest, whether it's mental or physical or even spiritual, literally they're looking for the crack in the armor where they can affect you. For me, it's my stomach. So what do negative entities do? They hit me at my weakest spot and send me to the bathroom. Okay. And that's actually a common thing, too, with people that are clairsentient and very, like, sensitive to energies. It fucks them up in the stomach. It sucks. <laughs> divination practices. Not all divination practices, but there are quite a few. Seances. Ouija boards. Um, depending on the type of tarot you're doing. If you're doing demon tarot, well, obviously, you're going to have a problem. 
Um, but it, that's why it's always important to cleanse your space. Spirit box sessions, that kind of goes with the investigation part, but spirit box sessions, again, cleanse your equipment, cleanse your space. Incorrect cleansing methods. This one's a big one. Um, if you cleanse your space incorrectly, not only can you piss off things that are already there, but depending on your cleansing method, you could bring more things to you. You don't want that. Land is another one. It's not something that people can really control. That's more on the outside of others control, right? But if you have the say or the control to not live on somewhere that's haunted or you have a means to move, do so. Sometimes though, if it's an attachment, moving ain't gonna make a difference because it's attached to you. But if it's something that is strictly attached to the land and is haunting the land, that's where, you know, you could get away with moving. All right, I want to get into his abilities because, oh boy, oh boy. I feel like a lot of you guys also somewhat have an idea of what he's capable of doing. And I feel like he might even know what he's capable of doing, especially if he has a family medium. They probably already told him. But for you guys, you know, I don't know what all of what you know, but empathic he's very empathic and he's clairsentient like i've stated before and that's feeling or psychic feeling feels the sensations pains illnesses etc of others inside their own body like it's their own issues um he is sensitive to different energies i feel like he has a potential to be able to do energy healing um I feel like he also has that potential of clairvoyance if he want to if he wants to work on it. I feel like that's something he could do. Um, but he might be seeing things in through dreams, daydreams, or just like zoning out, which is almost like daydreaming, but not really. Um, Claire audience, I wouldn't be surprised. That's psychic hearing, and I feel like for him, if he has this, and he might not even know. It would be during that time when he's trying to sleep and he can't because he's hearing people talking to, to each other and he's like, why does it feel like there's a bunch of people like talking to one another like I'm outside of their discussion, like it's weird. That's happened to me. But I feel like he definitely has this capability. Claire Cognizance. Just in the one video I watched, and I watched that video about his family haunting and him going through everything, but... I noticed very quickly that spirit, his spirit guides are using telepathy to communicate information with him and help him sort out things that he might not understand fully. But he's definitely claircognizant and they're communicating through his thoughts. And sometimes I feel like he might even know certain bouts of information. And and to put the cherry on top, he's definitely a medium. He has those capabilities. He can speak to the dead or the deceased, um, among other, you know, spirits and entities. He can do those things if he wanted to. It's a skill that he would have to work on along with all the other, you know, extra sensory skills. A lot of these all he needs is to just do his meditation, understand how these work in different people and how these abilities work with one another. Because, you know, you're not going to get what everything you need to know about these abilities in a book. Not one book covers this. And I've noticed this just through my massive library that I have in my bedroom. But they don't talk about the correlation in relationships that each ability has with one another. So somebody that is clairsentient and clairvoyant, when those two abilities mingle together, you get something different or something new. 
and they can kind of like branch off into different possibilities. So for me, I have all the the um, Claire's, but my main two are clairvoyance and clairsentience, and just holding objects, especially objects that mean a lot to somebody or have a lot of energy because they've been around a lot and witnessed a lot, I can hold an object and tell you at, like where it's been, what it happened around it, so on and so forth. And that is, yeah, psychometry. Um, but yeah, there's so much. If he wanted to, which I suspect he might be a little hesitant about doing because of his attachments and his experiences, he's probably gonna eh, take a step back, which again, I don't blame him. Some of this shit is scary. And if you don't train yourself on how to manage that fear, that fear can overtake you. And uh, yeah, you're just gonna be backing the heck up and you're gonna be like, never mind, I don't wanna know anything about this. Like, you're gonna be too scared to know about what's going on. But here's the thing when you live in that mindset, it actually hurts you more than it helps you. Because then future issues that may arise will scare you and the entities will feed off of that and can attach to you f because of that. So that's why it's always important to learn and research as much as you can and better understand everything that's going on because knowledge is power. Knowledge takes away that fear. Essentially, fear is because people don't fully understand or grasp everything that's going on with a certain, you know, like, subject matter or whatever. But hopefully that makes sense. Now let's talk about some advice and solutions here. If you find yourself with an attachment, what are some things that you can do? One of the first things you must do, this is very important, you must give permission to benevolent beings to assist you. So anything that is positive or benevolent, whether it be Jesus, archangels, whomever, okay, you must state your intentions, whether it's out loud or in your head, whatever, you have to state your intentions of what you want so they can help you. So for example, let's say I have an attachment and I want it gone. I would be like, okay, Archangel Michael, I do not give permission for this entity to be attached to me. I do not want it. Please get rid of it or please help me get rid of it and help me heal from the damage it has caused. Now you can state this in however you want, but essentially the goal is the same. Second. Second, okay, it is very important, and this should be like tied with number one, but it is very important to understand the origin from which the attachment came from. Why? That's because if you can understand where it came from and the behaviors that might have caused it, then you can stop those behaviors so when you do get rid of it you don't have it come right back or something else take its place so you always want to stop any specific behaviors that you did that may have caused it now in this example we can use colin and his blood rituals that he par took in so in this instance, you know, I would be like, hey, you don't want to be doing those rituals, man. Like, that's part of the problem, okay? So that person would stop doing those rituals and would pretty much cease in doing any kind of other types of similar rituals or practices, okay? So you don't want to be doing any dark magic, like I had stated before. The next thing is you probably would want to start cleansing your space and yourself. There are many ways you can do both, but because it's an attachment situation, I'd bump up to Copal and Frankincense. Okay, so do your space and you can cleanse yourself with smoke. Obviously do it in a well-ventilated area. You can even cleanse yourself with the smoke outside. That is a-okay. You're going to want to, if you're doing investigations, cleanse your equipment. 
That means your cameras, your microphones, your spirit boxes, your cat balls, <laughs> um, your phone. And obviously with your phone, it's going everywhere, even not just investigation. So you're going to want to clean it anyway. Not to mention, take a like a sanitary wipe and clean the shit out of your phone because it's dirty. Let's be honest. Okay. Out of the way there. So, um, yeah. Equipment. And for your body, you know, there's other things you can do. So you can do your smoke, like I said. You can do ritual baths. You can throw specific herbs in there, like ones that you feel drawn to, but obviously, you know, do a little research before you actually partake in the bath with those things in it. Make sure you're not allergic and that it's safe for you to do so. But also look at the spiritual meanings to make sure you're not being led astray. Because sometimes you can have negative entities that try to sabotage you, and that's not a fun time. Okay, so, and you can always look up ritual baths. Um, you can also go on artoftheroot.com. That's where I get my, like, salts and things, because they have a lot of the herbs and the salts mixed together. And then I don't got to worry about trying to, like, get ingredients and stuff. It's already together. Chuck it in your water and, you know, have that intention of that negative energy coming out of your body and going into the water and going bye-bye. Um, you can also go outside in nature. You're going to want to ground yourself anyway because you want that flow, that natural flow of, like, the positive energy coming in and then, like, the negative stuff coming out. So you can go touch a tree, go to, go to the grass barefoot, whatever you want, sand, the ocean, ocean's a good place. Ocean has got a lot of minerals and things in there that are very beneficial for your body. You just gotta have that intention behind it. Um, even if you can't get the herbs, even Epsom salt from the grocery store will help you. Um, let's say you have flowers cause it's spring. They're looking a little dreary and maybe you don't want them anymore. Take some of those petals off of them and throw them in your bath water. Um, orange peels. Let's say you just ate an orange. Um, just be careful with the orange peels, especially if you have sensitive skin, because it could burn it. But, like, throwing a peel here and there, not too bad. You can always double check, you know, what these spiritual meanings are. But those are just some things that I do. Um, basil is very protective. You can do your incense. I have a shit ton of incense. I'm starting to make my own. You can do that. Um, you can just even go in and do it with your light. Sometimes, though, people have a difficulty or a difficult time doing that because they have issues visualizing. That's okay. You can still do other things. They have sprays with, like, holy oil or holy water and essential oils. You can do that. Speaking of holy oil, putting them all on your chakras, very helpful, especially during attacks. And... It'll help prevent sleep paralysis and um, psychic attacks and things. I do this when I am being attacked a lot, especially like when they go to my stomach because that is my weak point. So boom, holy oil on my sacral and solar plexus chakras. And that usually takes the pain away immediately. Um, you could put it on your third eye chakra. That would also help. But you know, essentially you can do all your chakras simultaneously and do meditation. Meditation and shadow work. Okay. A lot of people, and you know, we've noticed this on the Lights of Midnight podcast because we, you know, offer free help on there. A lot of people expect immediate, immediate help, immediate, you know, attachment removal. Okay. While there are Reiki healers and Reiki's another one. So energy and Reiki healing to take out the energy. Yes, it is extremely helpful and beneficial, right? And while a Reiki healer or energy healer might be able to remove attachments directly from your body, especially if it's like more on the physical end of things, they can do that, absolutely. However, however, if you don't fix the point of entry, so whether that's like through traumas or through rituals or like whatever, right? If you don't fix what they're attached to and they're anchored to in the origin, they're either gonna come back 
or something of the same vibration is going to take its place. So I know Colin is going around looking for an energy healer or Reiki healer that can help take away his attachments. But it's not something that's going to happen overnight. This requires a lot of work on the other person's end, not just the Reiki healer or energy healer, okay? The person with the attachment has a lot of work to do. And like I was saying, some people expect immediate change. And sometimes, you know, you might feel an immediate difference. But if that thing is like deeply rooted in there, if you don't fix the traumas that created it or brought it there in the first place, it ain't going nowhere, unfortunately. And, and I, yeah, I've had clients in the past that expected an immediate change. However, they had a past of drug use and mental health issues, right? And while we could help with getting rid of the haunting and pushing it out and helping with some of the attachments, the attachments that had a direct relationship with the drug use and the mental health issues, they're still there because those things were not fixed, okay? So <laughs> you got to work on those things too. So that can be applied to pretty much anyone in the same situation, okay? So if you're somebody that has mental health things going on, you know, it would be advantageous to work on fixing those things whether you see a therapist or you do some shadow work within yourself, whatever floats your boat, whatever you feel more comfortable with, you know, either one will help, okay? And so you gotta work on yourself and as you naturally raise your vibration, they will either pop off or when it's time for those benevolent beings to help you get rid of them, it'll be easier. They'll just be able to go yeet and you know get rid of them so that's something to take into consideration other tips and tricks that we can add create a safe and sacred space what does that mean a place that's quiet away from any distractions that's cleansed of you know negative energy and stuff like that so you don't want to be doing any spirit box sessions or any investigations i don't recommend doing it in your house period but definitely don't be doing it in your safe space. Set up a ritual, a cleansing ritual for yourself, of yourself and your space. And I would set up like a, if you're having attachment issues, you can do it once a week or bi-weekly. Um, but just set up like a schedule so you don't forget. Crystals, crystals are very helpful. Um, black tourmaline, black obsidian, Clear quartz. I like rose quartz. I'm an earth sign. I like rose quartz. I think rose quartz is very helpful, especially to earth signs that take in a lot of shit and can't transmute it fast enough. Smoky quartz and amethyst also help. Boundaries. Set up your boundaries, please. Not just with, you know, on the spiritual end of things, but with people. You get people that have an intrusive type of energy. Sometimes you have people that are very Let's just say they're energy vampires, plain and simple. They're just energy vampires. Set your boundaries from those types of peoples and just people in general, because you don't want to be giving energy away willy-nilly without an equivalent energy exchange, okay? Important. That is one of my life lessons, by the way, is making boundaries for people and not being too nice and allowing people to walk all over me and just being like, oh yeah, I can help you with this, this, and this. Because eventually it becomes too much to chew and then I'm overwhelmed and then I can't do what I need to do. And so I have to say no sometimes, okay? So if I like say I can't help you or I'm busy, I'm sorry. Like it's truth and I'm trying to protect myself so I can help other people. But to Colin, he needs to do the same thing. Oh, 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 practice discernment. 
What does that mean? Learn your different types of energies. You got to learn because there's going to be some entities that are going to pretend to be good that are not. You're going to have a lot of entities and I see this so much in haunted items that pretend to be children, but they're not. So learn how to discern between the different energies. Please don't put yourself or don't purposely put yourself in risky situations. Okay? Okay. That means if it's a really haunted, fucked up place, do you really need to be there? Do you really need to be there? If you're doing it for content, please just make sure, you know, you are prepared. Okay? Okay. House plants. House plants can help you also take on some of that negative energy. And I had several plants that took some energy hits for me and kind of died, which, you know, I feel bad. But... You know, those types of spirits live to transmute negative energy into positive energy. That is what they do. So houseplants, definitely recommend. Cleanse things that are bought secondhand. Even if it's been in the store for a while, I would just clean it anyway. Especially like germs and things. But also like you can have secondhand things that were owned by previous people. Maybe they died and they really liked that item. Or some traumatic shit happened in the space with that item. And now you're bringing that to your house. Ew, you don't want to do that. So cleanse that. And you can, when it comes to stuff like that, you can use the smoke of Palo Santo or the sage in Palo Santo or frankincense and copal. Like, that. those are easy. That's easy to do. Practice, practice, practice. Love over fear. Work on your fear, okay? Mindfulness, being aware of your surroundings, and just keep learning about the paranormal and psychic abilities. If you are a paranormal investigator in this community, please, please, please take care of your health, your diet, your exercise, um, and get enough rest. Because if you don't, that's how you open up to illness. When you open up to illness, you make yourself weak. When I'm sick, I don't fuck around with the paranormal. Fuck no. That's a good way to get attacked and fuck that. Now, it's different depending on, like, the readings I'm doing. But if I'm doing videos based on, like, um, attachment and things. And this is part of the reason why this video is taking so long because I kept getting sick and whatnot, so I had to keep taking breaks from this. And it's important to do that so you don't get attacked. And or have something weasel its way in and become an attachment. So always take that into consideration. But I know you guys wanted a lot more information specifically relating to Colin, but until I get his permission to share that, I'm gonna have to whoop. So I hope this was enough to satisfy everyone's craving but yeah so thank you guys so much for watching i hope to see y'all soon and i have my canvas shit set up so hopefully i'll be doing a live soon with automatic painting so stay tuned to, for that and i will hope to see y'all soon peace out girl scout boy scout and every other kind of scout